in video games are often some of the most memorable characters you'll ever encounter. Whether it's for their personality, actions, backstory, or battles, good villains make a lasting impression on the player. But while video game villains in general have been talked about quite a bit in the Countdown community, today I thought I'd talk about one of my favorite parts of any villain, their theme song. A villain's theme can be used to make a player feel intimidated, put the villain's personality into music, or just be there to be a really goddamn good song. Now, even though this is a music countdown, the play before put rule is still in play, because I want to know the villain whose theme I'm talking about, and I'm no music expert, so don't expect me to get super analytical on all these songs. But because this countdown would be short and boring if I just said, oh, this is a good song, I like this song because it is good, in every segment, I'll try to explain myself the best I can. Now let's take a listen to the best ear candy that these guys are handing out. With the obvious exception of Bowser, the main series Mario games don't really have too many villains. And while the big guy has had some pretty awesome themes, I don't have some of the games where he gets an amazing one. So instead, I'll turn to the spin-offs. More specifically, the RPGs, because they're the only ones that I've played with worthwhile antagonists. So, am I going with In the Final? How about the Elder Princess Shroob theme? Well, those would certainly be options if I had played those games. Yeah, I've only played Superstar Saga and Super Paper Mario, so between those two, I think I'll go with Black. I'm tempted to screech out Black's name like he does, but I don't think the world is ready for that. Count Black is definitely one of the more interesting Mario villains. While he appears cold and creepy, he's actually quite emotionally tortured due to losing the love of his life. However, none of that really matters right now because there is no sense of sorrow in Count Black's theme. Instead, it's fast paced and combines a sense of villainy with a bit of magicalness? That's a word. In any case, the theme fits well with Black. It's intimidating, as any good villain theme should be, it also fits in with his magician-like appearance and odd personality. But while this theme is fun and all, let's move on to something a bit more... intense. In Monster Hunter, there's lots of creatures that will kill you in a matter of minutes if you tick them off. But can I really call them villains? They are just animals trying to survive, after all. Their idea of survival may involve killing you over as many times as possible, but I think PETA would show animal abuse if they were real. That leaves us with the monsters that are important to Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate's practically non-existent plot. And out of the ones that I've faced, I gotta go with the theme of the Leviathan Terror, the Legiris. The guy Chris is one of the most recognizable monsters in the game. Some people love it, some people hate it, but I think that most people can agree that this theme is great. The developers could have had freaking Pearl Phase theme playing during this fight and still would have been intimidating enough to make you wet yourself, but this theme makes attention skyrocket. The melody of the song fits with the underwater struggle that you go through, and the percussion in the background sounds almost tribal, which matches the setting of the game. And while the song may not be quite as intimidating when you're fighting the Legiacris on land, it still remains a good theme. But seriously, it works way better in the underwater fight. The Legiacris may not be a traditional villain, but it's one of the major antagonists of the game. So its theme stays. Now let's move on before I make a flexing joke. There's only one way to start this segment. Hades, Hades, Hades. While you may not be my favorite Uprising character, I will admit that you are one of the most entertaining villains I have ever seen. You're a troll, you tower over the rest of the cast, and you make a great running gag to the Autark. Oh yeah, there's one other thing about you that's pretty swish. I wonder what it could be. 
Hades' this infernal theme has atonement screams, have fun cowering in fear in my shadow, mortals, I can kill all of you in a matter of seconds. Well, maybe not that specific, but you get the point. Unlike a lot of the fast-paced themes on this list, this one is slow and drawn out in some parts, which makes it even better. And on the other hand, when the theme wants to speed up for those booming chants, it does that well too. Though I can't help but wonder where those voices are coming from. Maybe their cries from the population of the City of Souls is returned to monsters, or did Hades just have a really good singing voice? Well, he certainly does have good taste in music. The Zelda series is home to some of the most popular pieces of music in gaming. It can get pretty much every type of music right, from tragic to upbeat to intimidating. The series also happens to have some great villains, but strangely, from what I've listened to, combining the two doesn't always get great results. For some reason, many of the themes of Zelda villains have always been rather forgettable to me. Thankfully, the game with probably my favorite soundtrack in the series, Hyrule Warriors, has a villain with a great theme, even if the villain herself is kind of lame. I present to you, Psycho Storm. If you want intensity, you've got it right here. For what Hyrule Warriors lacks the story, it makes up for it in its soundtrack and visuals, and I think that this song proves that rather well. It starts out on a rather slow organ theme, which is probably my least favorite part of the song, but then transitions into a large assortment of instruments that are absolute final boss material. No scratch that. This music just sounds like it's waiting to be played for some end of the world event. It's got more than enough energy to make it work. If Sia was a better villain, or heck, if she just fit the song better, it might have made it higher on the list, but for now, it's just a really good song paired with a mediocre character. I can't really say much more about this theme, I just like it for being incredibly intense and having a heck of a lot of energy. That may be a bit petty considering what I said at the beginning, but I can't help it. Time to move on so I can address the angry comments and how I suck at sticking to rules. You know how a game is practically perfect in every way? Freaking Shovel Knight, that's what. Everything about this game is right on the mark, especially the amazing chiptune soundtrack by Jake Kaufman. Every track in this game is pure ear candy, so much so that it's hard to pick just one song. Decadent Dandy, The Defender, The Stalwart, The Betrayer... Which song do I pick? Mm, that'll work. I gotta say, Plague is one of my favorite characters in the game. He's got a fun stage, he's kind of insane, and his fight is one of my favorites. And of course, he has this awesome theme. The Vital of a Troil, besides being an annoying named type, is one of the craziest songs I have ever heard, and I love it. In Plague Knight's fight, there's so much going on that you don't really have time to think. You're just trying to avoid all the explosions that old bird face right here is making while simultaneously trying to launch as many attacks at him as possible. The crazy nature of this theme fits with that, and it's constantly growing higher and lower, throws a whole bunch of noise at you, and is just really fast. Even if you take it away from the fight, it's still a really good piece of music, but it just works so well combined with Plague Knight. Now hopefully there's a remix in Plague of Shadows. Even if Plague Knight is the protagonist, I can still enjoy his crazy theme. You know what game I really need to talk about more? Tales of the Abyss. You know, considering that it's kind of my favorite game of all time. Someday I'll talk about the other aspects of the game, like the story and the characters, but for now, let's focus on the music. This game is full of great tracks, even though most of my favorites aren't villain related, there's some that I can say that I love. The popular choice would be Meaning the First, but I have to give this spot to the main antagonist Van's theme. Oh wait, he's got four of them. Damn it, game. Vans themes are some of the best pieces of music in the game. 
At the time of farewell, it may not be that great, but finish the promise, a place in the sun, and obviously this track are all my top 10 favorite songs from the game. Of all the themes played during the final battle, I feel this one does this job best. As it starts, it gives you a feeling of achievement that's been building up throughout the majority of the game, letting you unleash yourself on this person who's been opposing you, and only gets better from there. There's a variety of instruments at work here, with high-pitched winds, low brass instruments, and constantly beating drums creating an intense atmosphere. Tales of the Abyss's graphics and gameplay don't exactly like create a grand final battlefield, so it's nice that the music makes this feel more game-ending. There's even a bit of sadness present in the theme, considering that Van really isn't a guy you want to kill. I mean, he isn't totally evil, just kind of misguided by his past. He's certainly more likable than some of the other villains present in the game. Time to Raise the Cross is everything that I'm looking for in a villain theme. It fits the villain, it adds to the fight, and it just composed really well. And it's only number 5. As much as I love me some Fire Emblem Awakening, one aspect of the game that I've always thought was rather meh is the music. I mean, stuff like Don't Speak Your Name is great and all, but most of the songs just kind of fade into the background for me. And some of them decide to have titles that are longer than the name of the game, so that's real nice. So how about the villains? Do they get some good music? Well, Grima's theme is pretty good, and I don't really give a crap about anything related to Valadar, so at least there's two others, who happen to share the same amazing theme. Gangle and Walhurt are by far my favorite major antagonists in the game. They're a constant presence throughout their arcs, they do things that have major effects in the plot, and they both have entertaining personalities. Certainly better than Dad of the Year right here. And they have Mastermind, which is, you know, kind of pretty good. With these guys both having entire armies behind them, Walhurt containing over a million soldiers, you'd expect their theme to be intimidating. And intimidate it does. On my multiple stages of Awakening, whenever I challenge these two, this theme starts up and makes me tense. That, and the fact that they can KO a lot of units with ease. Stupid weapons that I like until an enemy uses them. Intimidation factor aside, this song is quite good on its own. The song is mostly made up of chanting voices, and though I can't exactly understand a word that's being said, it's still sweet music to my ears. There are a few instruments used, mostly for transitions, and while I may like the chanting better, those parts can be a good change of pace. This is by far one of my favorite songs in the game, even if that isn't saying much. But hey, Fire Emblem Fates has some good music from what I've heard. Just one more thing to look forward to when we get it in, oh, uh, probably more than half a year. That's not a problem at all. Some villain themes are good because they represent the villain well in song form. Others are well-arranged, beautiful pieces of music that work as amazing final boss themes. And some strike a sense of intimidation to you that make you fear the villain. Or, instead of having anything like that, you could just make the theme as catchy as you possibly could. Yeah, I guess that could work too. Among Kirby fans, this theme is legendary. Well, the original might be the more popular version, but I like Triple Blocks better. But nobody really cares about which one is on the list, because whatever way you slice it, this is a really freaking good song. Does it represent the character well? I mean, DDD is a pretty lighthearted villain, to the point where he helps Kirby out of time, but I don't really think that this theme captures him well. I mean, when you fight him, he's wearing a freaking mask and wields a giant battle axe. This type of music is not what I would expect to hear when facing the weapon that's associated with decapitation. So yeah, that rolls out the theme representation and intimidation factor, so how about that composition? Well, it didn't just stumble into the number 3 spot and set up camp. It got here for a reason. This is one of the few songs that makes me want to dance. It's fast paced, there's a lot of different instruments at work, and while it may not fit the boss fight in terms of atmosphere, it certainly gets my blood running and makes the fight more entertaining. I don't have much more to say, so here's a bunch of countdown creators doing things to the beat of the song. They cannot resist the dancing urge. <laughs> Pokemon 
one isn't exactly known for having the greatest of villain. It is a series targeted towards a younger audience, so a super complex plot isn't to be expected. But hey, it's got some good music, so what happens when you combine the two? Well, first you make a villainous team that actually makes you think a bit, and then you give the grunts one of the best battle teams in the series. Mix them together, and you've got yourself a nice serving of versus Team Plasma. Aside from having a more pure goal than other villainous teams, the Team Plasma Grunts don't really stand out much. They're the same old bunch of jokers as ever, just with stranger uniforms and obviously this freaking theme song. From the moment the song begins, you know that you're in for an intense ride. The music is rather synthetic, which fits with the more technological theme of Pokemon Black, but even in the more natural Pokemon White, it still works with who it represents. It's not made to strike fear into your heart or exhilarate you for an important battle, it's just meant to be the theme of the grunts you face. It's a fast-paced song that plays during multiple battles throughout the game, and I love it every time. Whenever I face a Team Plasma Grunt, I look forward to this song. Plus, the Pokémon always get good experience, so that's always nice. This theme may just be background noise to some, but it's always stuck with me for some reason, and I'll continue to love it for a long time. And it sure as hell is better than the Black 2 and White 2 version. But even though I've loved this theme for the past four years, a new challenger has risen up to take number one. If there's two things that the Ace Attorney series almost always gets right, it's the villains and the soundtracks. The villains are some of the best you'll ever see in gaming, and the music is praised on a godlike level. And together, well, you should know it comes from that. Damon Gant, Furio Tigre, Goto, and so many other villains have some of the best themes I've ever heard. And on that note, let's talk about Justice for All. The game doesn't have the best objection, pursuit, or trial themes, which are usually very memorable, but it gets the individual themes right on the mark. So, out of the game's five villains with themes, which one have I chosen? Well, let's just say this theme is... refreshing. While this theme isn't clearly labeled as being mad on guards, the only time that it's ever played is around him in Pharaoh on my turnabout, so damn it, it's gonna count as his. On guard is one of the most evil, cunning, and dangerous villains in the entire series, and when he reveals his true nature, he becomes incredibly intimidating. However, when you first meet him, none of this is present. Mad on guard is presented to the player as a movie star who needs to get an okay on everything and is overall kind of dumb, which makes you assume that he's a normal client. And this theme makes you think that even more. It's slow and relaxing, something you need to expect from a guy whose motto is refreshing like a spring breeze. It lulls you into a false sense of security, making you think that On Guard is obviously not the murderer. Then he spills everything, pulls out his drink, and decides to have a good laugh at your expense. Of course, this theme is at number one for more than just adding to a twist. It also happens to be one of my favorite songs in the Ace Attorney series. It's an incredibly relaxing theme, but it also gets my work ethic and gear and makes me want to do things. It's the kind of music that you can listen to while reading, writing, working on a project, or interrogating a conniving movie star. And while it's completely different from every other theme on this list, it's still my favorite villain theme in video games. Funny how that works. This has been Yellow Weasel, and I'll see you in the next video.